Hello. I'm not going to act like I'm not terribly anxious and embarrassed about making a YouTube video. I'm just going to get through this first one. And I do wish I could have more eloquently articulated ideas to present. Maybe I'll get better about that as time goes on. Anyways, we're at the uh, 25th anniversary of Forrest Gump this year. Came out in 94 and 2019. So anyways, there's a whole issue of, of having been involved with that and reflecting on it and whatnot. I get asked a lot about it right now for obvious reasons. I don't have anything in particular to say on that, but it has made me think about some other things. Other than being in that movie as a kid, another huge part of my life, the most significant part of my life beyond that was being in the military. I was in the Army years ago, did a tour in Iraq, right? Short period of time, three to four years. And uh, anyways, it, I literally had decided to be in the military at that time as a more or less direct result of doing the movie as a kid. Like, I was a very, very regular kid. I've always been a really regular kid, or at least I was at one time. I uh, was a regular kid. I got that part, went and did it for a few months, and then came back home to Mississippi and just went right back to being a regular kid again, or at least tried to. That was the idea. And uh, <clears throat> uh, something of that magnitude, you know, maybe did so well and it became so iconic and everybody knew what it was. I wasn't able to just be the regular kid I wanted to be from that point on, um, you know, though I tried. And uh, so basically I went through my childhood and teenage years <clears throat> where that's what I got introduced as everywhere I went. That preceded me. And I was introduced as, hey, this is the kid that was in Forrest Gump. That was the beginning of every conversation I ever had with any new person. And uh, <clears throat> what that did you know, to the mind of a teenager and whatnot, is that I always thought that people were expecting something more of me because they're like, oh, hey, this is you. That's really cool. Let's hear the story. And then now what? It's always followed by, and what are you doing now? You know, because I was just a regular kid and never tried to be more than that, there was never a follow-up. I did that, and now I'm just a regular person like I already was and there's no cool story to tell beyond that that's that's what I got in my head I felt like I was failing to meet people's expectations all the time as a kid whether they actually thought that or not probably 90% of the time they didn't uh, but I got that in my mind so when I turned 18 19 9 11 had happened right a couple years before that I uh, toyed with the idea of being in the military beforehand um, but I had never really considered it until until there was a war going on in Iraq and Afghanistan. Oh yeah, I'm gonna point out too. I've basically spent the past these 25 years since the film more or less ignoring that I was ever in it. I mean, I, I kind of took a position when I was a kid that it's no more significant than saying, "Hey, I played basketball in seventh grade and I made a free throw one time." Awesome story, right? But I mean, no more significance than that. I did this, I did that, did this movie thing, bam, that's it. Anyways, uh, basically ignored that. And so you get to the time of the wars, 2003, 2004, Iraq and Afghanistan, and uh, I found myself very compelled to join the army, <clears throat> specifically infantry, and to go to the front lines in Iraq. Like, I had that specific goal of doing that. Because at that point, I really made myself disillusioned as a kid with where I fit into things. And I started to think, all right, there's an actual war going on now. People are going to it. Some volunteers, some don't so much. And I was like, I need to be in that. I need to be a part of that. And granted, this is a very naive 18-year-old, 19-year-old thinking this. But I remember thinking, like, there's nothing you can do with yourself that's going to equate to having done this thing as a kid, except maybe going and being in an actual war and having that experience and having that story to tell, right? I was like, maybe that'll be something else worthy you can do with yourself. And so, uh, anyways, very silly reason to go do that, but that's honestly one of the things that drove me to do it as a kid. And uh, so anyway, the point is, when the Army uh, did a tour in Iraq, 
and uh, did it, did the few years, got out, right? Did the exact same thing of ignoring it, right? Just like, just like I ignored, uh, ignored basically the experience I had as a kid in that movie. Didn't really try to, try to figure out where that fit into my life and everything. I also did the army, got out, and pretty much just. I didn't ignore that I was in the army, that I was in Iraq, but I hadn't really given much thought to to the ramifications or the consequences or anything that it really meant. It's just another random story I had. So a lot of good it really did me anyways as far as like making me feel like, oh, I did something. Anyways, um, I've had about 11 years or whatever since I've been out. And uh, in this time, I have haven't done very much except I went to school for a little while. You know, it took me about a decade to finish a four-year college degree. And we'll get on to that in a second as to why it took that long, but I haven't done a lot. And I, because I've ignored my experiences there, I came out of Iraq uh, with the position that it had had no effect on me uh, at all. Like, PTSD and all that was becoming a big issue at the time. And I remember like coming out and thinking like, well, I guess I'm lucky because I don't have, I don't feel affected by it. Not just that, but I didn't know a single person that I went to Iraq with. And we were in probably the worst part of Iraq to be in during the worst possible time to be there. Like it was as intense as it was going to get during that particular war. And yet I don't know anybody that I was there with, including myself that ever came back and was like, Oh, I'm just all fucked up. You know, I, I didn't experience that firsthand. I know that a lot of people were, but I just did not see it. And so I just had that position from, from then on that, uh, that, you know, uh, for whatever reason we went through it unscathed and, you know, good for us. Uh, anyways, um, it's taken me about 11 years to even remotely consider that that there might be traumas for for all of us that I haven't recognized. Probably I've seen symptoms for years and I just have, have not acknowledged that that's what they are. But uh, I think there might be two kinds of PTSD. There's the kind where, the kind you hear about all the time where somebody shuts a car door too hard and you jump because you think it's a gunshot. That's the kind that I was always like, well, I don't have that. Other people I know don't have it. So it just doesn't exist as far as we're concerned. And then I think there's the kind where you, your trauma is that you're not traumatized, if that makes any sense. The trauma is that you're not traumatized by traumatizing events. But as a side effect, you're also not affected by anything else either like the way you compensate for that experience and not let it traumatize you while you're there is you you psychologically adapt so that no matter how terrible an event is it doesn't affect you right you absorb it and you keep going you keep doing your job which i guess is something you have to be able to do you get out and try to go back to a regular life and yeah, i guess you can eventually find out that you're also not affected by anything else like, nothing in the world is having any effect on you. Uh, good things, bad things, none of it. Uh, things that should make you happy don't make you happy. Things that should make you sad don't make you sad. Things that should make you angry don't make you angry. It's like you lose your, your sense of feelings and emotions altogether. You become numb. The world starts to feel dead, right? So, I've gone the better part of the last decade basically experiencing that but making no effort to talk to anybody about it that was in the military, that's, that's in any other profession or whatever, just, just completely shut it out. It's only been very recently that I started talking to people that I was over there with, and it became apparent to me that I was experiencing something that I couldn't explain and that I did not feel right, and that I never have felt right since I came back. One of the first days I was back from Iraq, I was stationed in Germany, hanging out with some friends that I was there with. <clears throat> and I remember it was like, we were sitting around chilling, drinking beer, watching a movie. I was doing all these relaxing things that I used to really enjoy. And I realized that day that something was wrong and I wasn't enjoying it. Not only was the things that used to make me happy not making me happy, but I was even feeling depressed in situations where I would normally feel at ease. But I remember experiencing that one of those first days and just brushing it off like, mm, I don't know. Anyways, no big deal. I've had that same experience 
over and over and over and over for years, right, with everything. And uh, like I said, it took me a very long time to even acknowledge that, that could represent something. And so I started talking to other people I was there with and uh, have asked them, have you experienced this? What, what has been your experience? You know, uh, like if you don't feel like you're heavily traumatized by war, have you felt off all these years? Have you felt like something's just not right, even if you can't put your finger on it? And overwhelmingly, that is the the experience of so many guys that I was there with. <clears throat> like all of us come back and try to go back into our regular world and regular lives and something never seems right. The things never seem right again. They just don't seem right. They don't feel right. You don't feel right. You don't fit into the world. And uh, it's subtle enough that you can just, you know, cover it up and, you know, dress it up and paint over it for a long time. But it's one of those things, it's like, it's like radiation sickness, you know? You get exposed to some radioactive substance years ago, and you don't know that it's affected you. And it takes years and years and years and years before you realize that it's been eating you alive from the inside the whole time. And by that point, it's probably too late. It's that kind of thing. It's just there, and you just get to ignore it as long as you possibly can ignore it until you can cannot ignore it any further. Um, I'm sorry, half of this doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm rambling about it it's because I haven't collected my thoughts on it, uh, but it's a confusing topic. It's hard to collect your thoughts on it. Anyways, um, that's been a thing that apparently a lot of guys have. Guys and girls, right? And this is kind of like our own Gulf War Syndrome, you know? This is the Iraq, the Iraq War Syndrome. As far as I can tell, it's not PTSD in the classic sense, but it's something. Maybe it's just another form of that. Anyways, uh, I've been really trying to figure out what it's done to me, how it's affected my decisions over the years, because I know it has. I know that, that the past decade I've been out of the military, I've not been that great at making good life decisions. And I keep kicking myself in the ass over it. And I'm like, you know, you've learned a lot. You're an adult. You should have figured things out. Uh, but it's like I, I have had no motivation for a long time to do anything. Nothing just seemed worth pursuing ever. And so, uh, you know, I've wavered between not accomplishing anything because I wasn't motivated to do it or wasting my time, partying too hard, things like that. Finding other ways to be stimulated. I've had the whole drug, alcohol, depression thing over the past 10 years, not all the time, but come in and out of it. Uh, again, that's trying to find something to stimulate yourself when nothing seems stimulating anymore. And then, of course, that's all a dead end. That doesn't go anywhere. Um, but anyways, this is a very prevalent thing. All the people that I was there with, not all of them, but many are experiencing it. Uh, I've got it too. I feel stupid for having ignored it for so long because other people have this plight. And I could have been helping them in some way or another this entire time, helping myself. And have just, like I said, brushed it off. But uh, it does occur to me that I can't identify all the reasons that, that it, it might be a problem, but uh, I think one of them, one of the guys I was there with pointed this out. He was saying it's because you go and you get changed, and then you come back to the world that hasn't changed, right? You change, I guess for better or worse, and you come back to the world that's the same as it was when you left. And uh, I think there's some truth to that. The... Uh, The world, this regular world of ours, has always got its problems. Uh, but when you go to a war zone, first person, you witness aspects of humanity that you're not going to see normally in the regular civilian world. When we went to Iraq, I know the original reasons for going there, the whole WMD thing and all that. That's a whole other topic, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter why we went to these wars. It only matters what we ended up doing while we were there. And in the case of Iraq, while I was there, we were basically there to function as peacekeepers. Even if that's not what the original intention was, that's what we ended up doing. Here, Iraq devolved into a civil war and was tearing itself apart at the seams. And that's largely because we went in there and destroyed the country and made it drop into a civil war. And so, of course, we go in and we're responsible for trying to keep the peace and remedy it the whole time. But anyways, 
Point is, is if you were there as a grunt on the ground, all you experienced for that duration of time was was basically trying our best to keep the people in that country from killing each other because that's what they were doing. They were killing each other. Not everybody, right? You had, uh, just like in any situation, you had small groups of very militant people that were going out and doing whatever they were doing to everybody else and then other groups fighting them. And caught up in between this is the civilians, the people, the bystanders who aren't even part of it really. So we were there to try and keep that peace, but uh, overall, you had this country that devolved into sectarian violence, right? They were killing each other for their religious beliefs, uh, for ethnicity, for tribal affiliations. Just any number of petty reason to kill your fellow Iraqi because they didn't believe the same thing as you, they didn't necessarily look the same as you, you thought, or have the same family lineage. And I'm not gonna. I'm not trying to dig at Iraq in particular. This is a thing all over the world, right? You've got this same situation happening in other Middle Eastern countries. You've got this same situation happening all over the world. Even in the modern Western civilized world, you have people ripping at each other over religious beliefs, uh, ethnicities, things like that, right? Just, just people that all look and seem the same to the rest of us, right? And we as Americans will look at people in Middle Eastern countries and like, well, they all seem to be the same group as far as we're concerned. They look the same, they act the same, they seem to have the same religion and the same cultural beliefs. But within their culture, they see major differences. They see major divides. Just like, I imagine the rest of the world looks at America and would say, you know, for, for us to be like, well, you know, yeah, I'm an American, he's an American, but you know, he's a, he's a Baptist and I'm a Catholic, or he uh, he's a Democrat and I'm a Republican, right? These imaginary lines that we draw between each other, I would imagine that the rest of the people in the world like, I mean, I get what you're saying, but it's also kind of stupid to really divide yourself like that or to be fighting over anything that you're just making up in your head, basically. You're, you're you're all together, you know, uh, but I guess that's a problem everywhere. Anyways, uh, for us that went over there, we saw people tearing each other apart. We saw a place where civilization had failed. Um, not necessarily their fault. Obviously, you know, outside forces came in and did a lot to that country to, to instigate that. But civilization had failed. Civility had failed. It all had gone down. And we've seen people doing terrible things to each other for for the craziest and pettiest uh, reasons, you know, from, you know, religion, politics, ethnicity. Anyways, so we go over there. We experience that. Uh, people get really messed up by it. You know, you got people coming back from having their PTSD from war because they were involved in that stuff. You come back to your world, your country as a civilian, right? You at least think, well, I'm from a place where that's not happening. I'm from a place where people aren't doing that to each other. You know, that's not happening in America. Well, uh, I realize that it is happening in America. Uh, I guess it's always been happening, but it's gotten worse, right? This country has become so polarized, right? on so many different lines and it keeps getting more and more polarized, right? That I'm thinking, all right, one thing that probably bothers a lot of vets in the back of their heads, uh, something that probably traumatizes all of us is coming back and seeing that kind of behavior now transplanted into our own people, right? And uh, we saw things falling apart there and now we're seeing things fall apart here, right? And if you've already experienced the worst of it, you've seen bloodshed and destruction, then it probably really, really gets you anxious to see it happening in your own country, you know, and knowing where this stuff ultimately goes. People don't see where it goes here, right? People that are fighting each other here, I mean, they can take it seriously, but they don't take it seriously enough. They don't realize where, where this goes. They don't realize where they're taking it, right? Extremism, right? Simplest thing, extremism. Uh... Extremism is on the rise, and uh, extremism of all kinds. Um, and I mean, from all sides, left, left wing extremism, right wing extremism. Uh, people are throwing around 
the uh, throwing around the fascist and communist words these days, well, that really tells me something, right? It tells me one that people are not halfway as well educated as they should be. If you knew anything about what communism is or what fascism is, then you would know that that this country is not even remotely to that point on any end of the spectrum. It's just nowhere near that. That's sensationalism. That's the leaders that be on either side are trying to rile people up to follow them. And so they start throwing out the, the most uh, emotionally charging adjectives they can think of. Anyways, and a lot of people just go with it because they don't really know any better. Uh, I guess it, it gives them some kind of emotional fulfillment to think, well, I'm fighting against these guys who are obviously very bad. But anyways, I guess what I'm saying is that people need to take a step back and and see what the ramifications of their of their extreme thoughts and actions are against other people. Uh, I see people fighting each other now, and I see stereotyping going on. And the thing is, with us fighting each other, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, black, white, you know, people of uh, first, whatever I guess you call it, first gener first generation Americans versus people who are recent immigrants. There's all these different divisions and all this fighting that's going on. And uh, we're all, we seem to be fighting each other on behalf of a leadership that's really the ones instigating it for their own benefit, right? Small group of people that are at the top that have the loud voices that you hear all the time saying, these people are bad, these people are bad, you need to rally against them, you need to rally against them, and the, the rest of us, the masses, we fall in line and we're like, oh yeah, we're going to go fight because you told us to against other people because you told us to. And so we end up going and fighting each other when we really even don't have a problem with each other. We've just been told we have a problem by somebody else. But anyways, uh, we've seen this stuff. Vets have already seen this. We've already seen where this goes down at the bad end of the spectrum and been there, done that, uh, don't care for it, and now we come back and we're seeing it go that direction here. So I don't know that it, it's that much of a mystery as to why we don't feel like we fit back into the regular world anymore. That's because the regular world is sliding into insanity. Why should we fit into it? Especially since we've learned these lessons firsthand, right? We're not going to be coming back and saying, yeah, you people are being rational and sensible. You're a bunch of fools, all right? It's foolish to, it's foolish to hate anybody because of their political positions. It's foolish to hate anybody because of their opinions. You, you don't have to agree with anything at all. You don't have to agree with anything, right? But what you need to do is you need to respect other people's positions. You take a person who has a position on something that you utterly are against, but you can still respect that they have a position of some kind. Might not be yours. And in most cases, people have a reason for having the position they have. And you can pick those reasons apart and argue about are they justifiable or not. But there's a reason, right? Something pushed them to that point. You can at least respect that they have a position, whether it's the same as yours or not, and start there. Respect that there are different people with different ideas and that you don't have to hate people because they don't have the same ideas that you have. And stereotyping? You know, one reason I, I ignored, uh, ignored my experience in the film for like 25 years and one reason I've spent so much time ignoring my experiences in the military and what any of this stuff means. Stereotypes, right? I'm terrified of being stereotyped. I hate stereotypes. All the problems in society are because of that. All the prejudices, racism, uh, political biases, it's all because people stereotype each other. They look at somebody and they pick some very quick superficial thing and say, I know everything about that person based on that now. I don't have to learn anything. I don't have to make the effort. I know everything I need to know, right? 
I think people do that out of fear, right? People want to feel comfortable. They want to feel like they comfortably know everything they need to know. So they automatically stereotype other individuals and say, I know everything I need to know. And it just makes you feel more knowledgeable and more secure with your position in the world, I guess. But anyways, stereotyping is a terrible thing. People do it, do it to each other all the time. And uh, I think I was so terrified of being stereotyped all my life that I just ended up making myself into a stereotype, you know? Uh, I didn't want to be shoved into a niche and I kind of got myself shoved there. Anyways, but that's, uh, that's what people do. That's what people do to each other that they shouldn't do. Um, anyways, I'm going to clarify some of these ideas later. Uh, kind of in a position right now to where I just feel like my head's going to explode if I don't get some of this stuff out. So uh, I'll have something more concise to say at some point. But anyways, I guess for now I just want to acknowledge that uh, a lot of my fellow veterans are experiencing some weird, weird post-military situations that we don't quite understand and we're not, not sure now how to address it or approach it in the world just like me it's all it's left me very confused but a lot of guys are suffering from the same plight and uh if i can i want to be a part of helping them find the right direction uh, same with myself right anyways uh for the time being that's all i have to say about that <laughs>